judgment by the Italian Supreme Court, the Corte di Cassazione, as we call it, they have decided that corporal punishment was forbidden forever in Italy, both in school or at home. And I think one of the reasons why this happened is also because of the influence that the Convention on the Rights of the Children had on those magistrates. If, if there is a country where the child is really the king, this is Italy, and I'm very proud of it. As a legal scholar, it seems clear to me that we must strengthen the laws that protect children uh, and, above all, make clear the basis for parental powers, that parents' powers have to be conceptualized and treated as a matter of, uh, of trust that we place in parents to act in the best interests of children. They're not an absolute right. No one has a right to beat his or her child. Uh, this has to be a concept that we bury along with the uh, concepts of slavery and of uh, discrimination against women. It can no longer be a respectable way to think about parents' power. Um, I believe that what we're seeing now is part, uh, is the most recent stage in progression where at first we found it difficult to accept um, public laws relating to children's education, now the new battleground is uh, violence against children and corporal punishment. For example, when does corporal punishment um, go beyond that which is appropriate for a parent to use and become a form of uh, criminally prosecuted or civilly uh, prosecuted child abuse? This is now the cutting edge. Uh, but the same kinds of objections were at one time raised against laws uh, prohibiting child labor and requiring children to attend school. The Declaration of Independence sets a benchmark for thinking about liberty in the United States in our history. And it says, uh, all men are created equal. Now, at the time those words were written, it was thought of as a path-breaking concept that uh, noblemen and commoners were equal, um, that rich men and farmers would be equal. Uh, but women and children were not included in that concept of equality. Uh, in fact, women and children were considered to be, uh, by nature, not equal, not capable of participating uh, in the civic life of the country. And we've seen those kinds of discriminations erode over time. Uh, racial discrimination was entrenched in the Constitution. And it took a civil war in order to cleanse the American political life of that very clear uh, injustice towards people because of their race. The, the suffrage movement labored long and hard to achieve equality for women who were not given the vote uh, even at, during the civil, after the Civil War when the Civil War amendments were passed that uh, gave the vote to people of African descent. Uh, women were not included and it took a long battle to include women in that franchise. The legal system is now attempting to respond to emerging concepts of children's rights um, and what we're seeing is an attempt to engage in law reform that will create mechanisms or strengthen mechanisms to protect children from what are clearly very severe harms. Uh, the numbers of children who are uh, permanently uh, injured by violence from their caregivers is uh, unacceptably high. So the legal system has to find some way to respond uh, by creating s mechanisms and rules that will uh, prevent violence against children. Now, obviously the first step is to make such violence visible. I think we've taken that step by creating reporting statutes, 
uh, mandatory reporting statutes, doctors, teachers, uh, many other people who work with children are required to report instances of violence against children. So in a sense we've made that first step of taking uh, violence out of the closet and making it visible. Now we're challenged with how to take the next steps of not only making it visible, but of responding in ways that protect the authority and power of parents to raise their children, and parents are the people we trust and rely on to raise every new generation of children. How do we protect the parents' authority and yet stop this uh, epidemic? I shouldn't use the term epidemic. Um, how do we protect parents' authority and yet uh, prevent an abuse of that authority in a way that causes severe harm to children? Now that's the challenge before us at this time. The legal response, what we have down on paper in our statute books, uh, in the written laws, uh, can only go so far. Uh, it will only, we can only truly uh, deal with violence against children when all of the players in the system, judges, lawyers, uh, professionals who work with children, understand the importance of accepting and acknowledging that the violence is real and that it is wrong.